mimi naitwa Patrick Matheka na nimetoka area inaitwa Makueni na ninaishi hapa Olosirkon since from uh, 1996 Kiamuka asubuhi kama ni siku kama hii ya leo si ni Friday tunaoshanga tunakunywa chai kwanza tukimaliza kukunywa chai mimi na watoto yangu mama kama ako hapa tunaingia tunaosha hii mifugo yetu juu ya kupe tukimaliza kuosha tunawatoa tunawapeleka msituni kwenda kuwachunga kufikia kitu saa sita tunawapeleka mtoni wanakunywa maji wanakuja wana relax saa tisa hivi wanatoka wanaenda tena wanakula mpaka 6 6:30 tunawarudisha tena wanakuja sasa wanalala na sisi tunavumzika kina ita zinguge eh nyumbani ni huko kuna ita mateko lakini na huko ndani sana sasa na tunakuitanga mutaro asubuhi nikiamka na kamua napea ngombe chakula alafu natokezea barabara ni sababu nitakutana na nyani hapo wakienda kutoka saa mbili na nusu hivi sana rudi nyumbani nafanya duties za nyumba alafu sana subili wa kuja saa hizo zingine njioni nikimaliza kupika nalala tu kama lisalivi moja ndivyo nitokeze tena kwa balabala alafu nigoze tena saa dogo my name is sasine and we are in our village and this is our home spring go outside and now we're starting cooking some breakfast and then the young boys have to get out from the village and go out in the fields until evening hours because normally we go from the morning till evening traditionally many Kenyan communities have interacted with wildlife quite positively. In fact, a lot of their folk stories, uh, the stories they tell their children, their, their totems, you know, they have, there's an intricate relationship between people and wildlife. Initially, they looked at the wildlife as a resource, but not anymore, not anymore. That is where you see so much incidences of poaching are coming up and the communities can see what is happening and they keep quiet. In fact, the communities that I live with, that I work with, to them they would rather get the elephants out of their areas. Huwa tunatanisha na ndovu, vitu kama nyani, nyati, na at times kuna kutanga hizi vitu kama fisi kitu kama ndovu zinakuanga sumbufu jo kwa wanaanza tukiwa nini chakula kikiwa tu changa wanaanza kuja kutoa ntoa juzi ndovu wakatokezea wakaingia kwa shamba nikaamka nikaenda kuzitoa Sasa zima kwanza usikize penye wako juu akisikia makelele kwa tu wamenasimama Nikawa na mbwa Mbwa alisonga tu karibu na ye naye alafu saa hiyo kufukuzana kwa mbwa na na ndovu mbwa alikuja tu kwa miguu zangu Sisa anianze kukibia Nikaonelea afadhali nilushie ndovu tot iache na tot mi ni tolo mtoloke ewa naweza kula kila kitu ka kwa jilani yangu hapa hata wamevuna saizi walivuna zikwatu hivi 
wamevuna juu ya kuhalibiwa. Sisi alitoa ni kitu kidogo sana. Ni kweli wakati nilinosha tot, alikuja kavuja voja tot. Lakini hakuona chenye kingine. Sasa nikatokezea, "Eh, hey, siku hiyo siku toka siku rudi tena kwa shamba." So well, how do people then react when this tension starts to how does this tension manifest itself in the communities? A group of poachers moves into that community while before they would have whistleblown, maybe said, oh no, these are not good people. Now they see them as agents of reducing population, right? So they start to support them, give them a place to hide their, their trophies after they've been out poaching. Fisi wanatoka huko kwa gemu. Wanakuja hata kama unalala, anachimba boma upande wa nyuma. Wewe ukiamka asubuhi unakuta mbusi hakuna. Ukifuata unakuta amekulia tu somewhere. Nitaje kina visi kuna siku wamekuja more than 30. Wakakuja unaona hiyo anje iko pale atukulala. Tukiwafukuza. Sisi ni kupika makelele huku ho 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 na eh, waende watoke wasitukulie mambusi huyo ofisi alinikosea anatoa mbusi yangu alitolea kwa ile kona akabeba akapeleka kwa msitu pale akaenda akakula naona na tunalala kwa hii nyumba anakuja anatoa choo kwa hii kona hiyo ni madharau kiasi gani dirisho mzuri tujue yeye eh, ndio mbingwa amekula na amekuja kukunya kwa mlango ninakuanga linto baba Juu juu ifisi labda amechelewa amelala kwa kimajani pale. Usikie tuka kondoo kama haka kameanza kulia kumbi ya kuna. Kame umu wa kicho. Huku uwezi hacha mbusi silale mustuni. Uwezi. Uwezi ukaacha. Hizo mbusi kama tuseme ume, umepoteza. Juu uwezi hacha mbusi kwa kupenda. Kama umepoteza inakuanga ni 50-50. Eita upate ama ukose. Ukikosa. Maybe utapata mangosi. Ukipata, unambia <laughs> mungu wa sante. <laughs> Kama ingini yangu ilichukuliwa pale, tulifuata manyoya hata atuku wana mangosi. Manyoya tukafuata ikafukishwa barabara. File tu alikuwa nafurutwa. Ilikuwa mbuzi mzima kubwa. All the village we have for London one thirty thousand. Goat, sheep, they are like 300. And they have the little belt, and then we can just hide them and take them through the bushes. But when we go there, sometimes we just like go behind them so that we can protect them against the wild animals, lions, or hyenas. Yeah, because the leopard and cheetahs, they don't hunt the cows, they normally just hunt uh, sheep and the goats. When I was uh, 10 years old, get out, take cattle out in the bush, and then we find four lions. They try to hunt a cow. They grab it and pull it down. And we run out, it was two boys. And then we chase it away, and the lion ran away, and he just injured the cow, but he didn't kill. We have loss of uh, property, that is livestock. As you know, people from here are predominantly pastoralists. So um, they have lost quite a number of uh, livestock. Chinalango ni metian motik. Ilikuwa na ichunga. Mbusi na kondo. Ilipo kuwa ni kichunga. Simba akaja. Alipo kuja. Si kwa nilimuona. Kujaribu kuona. Asha uwa kondo moja. Nami kujaribu kufukusa. Fisi wa kondo kea. Kajaribu kurudi. 
liona fisi tatu hivi wakitoroka kumbe washaua kondoo na mbuse mmoja na hivyo nikaanza kuitana kuomba msaada kwa walie karibu and then we also have loss of life and yes we have had cases uh, where people have been either killed or maimed by wildlife in general and mostly elephants and buffaloes they are the big um, you know conflict animals so um, I think that you have just returned back from heading kettles just come back to the village and we have one of the young boys that we went with him and he just get injured by killed by the elephants he just hooked and put it up and threw it out in the river so that's why I come before the kettles arrive back to the village Depending on what it is that your livelihood is dependent on, if the relationship with wildlife then starts to jeopardize your ability to survive within that economy, to be able to pay school fees for your children, to put food on the table, um, to cultivate a crop so that you can also be seen in the community as one who knows how to live, then it is not a wonder that sometimes the attitude towards wildlife becomes negative. But it is not a hatred-based attitude. It's just a tension that comes out of that frustration that you do need to leave. One looking in from the outside may then say it's a negative attitude or it's a hatred. It's more complicated than that. So zingine wana kuanga wa sumpufu. Lakini lazima tu ujue kukaanisha na wao tu lazima wakae na lazima we ukae um the wild animals are also good they're not bad they're also good because you can see like the way they react in the nature it's the way they have been brought so it's not like something that we when we see them like hunting the wild animals we don't trap them we just leave them and see just keep and watching what they're doing and there's nothing bad mimi kile ninaamini ni kuwa hawa wanyama waliumbwa kama sisi. Na ni kama hawa wanyama yangu. Sasa hizi ngombe yangu ukifungulia ione nyasi smart. Inataka hapo hapo. Ni kwa nini ngombe Mungu akiumba haliumba ikulange nyasi. Hakuumbwa akunywe chai kama hii tunakunywa. Hakuumbwa kule nyama. Naye wale wanyama wameumbwa wa kule nyama. But in essence what we have found out is that most of the people here are you know, uh, positive about wildlife. They like it because if, uh, since time immemorial they have coexisted with them and they want to continue to do so. The only difference comes in when uh, we talk about issues of benefits, like who benefits from wildlife and who doesn't. Those communities that live next to wildlife must be supported by our laws and, our, and the actions. Eh? So for instance, they must be compensated for the losses that they incur. And compensation only works if it is timely and if it really covers the cost that has been incurred. Our law makes provisions for compensation. This is something that is entrenched in the Wildlife Act. And uh, it was, uh, when the new Wildlife Act was uh, done, the, the issue of uh, committees came up, it is there, and uh, that is, uh, it deals mostly with if a, 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 a community person is doing farming and uh, the, wild, the elephants come in and destroy their crops, there is a process that they are supposed to follow so that they can get the compensation from the national government. Okay, kuna kuanga na hiyo compensation, lakini kwa tunajaza, tunajaza, tunajaza hata sa hizi, it's a sieve. Tunaona kaa, kuna kitu ambacho kita. Uh, if a, 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 a pastoralist 
keeps uh, his uh, livestock and the predators come and eat th them up. There is a process that they follow, they fill up some forms and then they are given compensation. Uh, yeah, well, I was saying they was going to pay some cows when the lions killed and leopard and then there's nothing they pay. It's just kind of cheating. They're not helping with anything. It's just the way that um, what, we, what we get from the national park is just grass from the cows. The main difficulty is that uh, as much as the communities are given, you know, the high hopes of getting compensation, up to today the government has never given any money to compensate those people. So people, the communities are just complaining. Hii nimekuambia ni ofisi. Na kila mtu ako area hii tuko. Ako na mifugo kwa boma. Hiyo ndi ofisi yake. Na ndiyo kioski yake unaweza fungwa, ukifunga. Sijui kama unanielewa hapo. Unanielewa? Sasa, juu mimi sijatuma ofisi kutoka gepu. Ye mwenyewe amejileta na migu yake ngapi? Ine. Akuja uwe hii kakondo kangu, kamoja hata kama ni mtoto. Kenya wildlife kwa napawa nipatia mbusi tano kwa mbusi moja. Sio siri? Unfortunately, it has not worked very well in terms of implementation. Okay? So somehow there needs to be a conversation between the NGO community, the local people to think about this this idea of how do we compensate people for the losses that they incur through living close to wildlife, okay? Now, on the other hand, when people are compensated, then they can also not be allowed to break the law. The wildlife also needs to be protected by law, okay? So when people are caught poaching, then they need to face the full force of the law. Solution in Nukujengea Wanyama. Mifugo ya ni hawa wenye tunaishi na wao. Ni kuwajengea. Kujenga, tuseme ni kama vile unaona nimeweka mabati kwa hii boma ya ngombe na mbusi. Juu fisi ya naongopa kitu inaitwa kelele. Atakangi. Iyo tu, jo itasaidia. Simba wezi kuja kuguza guza mabati. Naona? Solution ni watu wajengea nini mifugo Juu hata tukue na mna gani hata watu wajae iwe ni hii nyumba na hii nyingine Simba atakuja tu na hiyo njia na barabara yenye itakuwa Juu wako hapa As much as we are doing the electric fences we need, this is a short term uh, strategy we need to have some mid-term strategies, we need to have long-term strategies. And uh, the, the mid-term and the long-term long strategies should start as we do the short-term. Saizi tunaona ka ni afadhali vile sasa wamefungia. Wanyama wakai uko kwa na sisi tukai na uko. Now that we have the county government, one of the things that I think they should fight to put in place is a clear procedure as to how the revenue is shared in terms of how much goes back into the community. Because the community uh, are living with wildlife and they suffer consequences of that. But if you look at what is trickling down, it's very little. They should even build a school here for the children. They should be having persons that go to the Maasai that are living around the park. But the way that they are not doing it, it's just the way that you don't have anything to say to them. Because when you get there, you, be, you can even sometimes beat them with sticks. The long-term strategies, I would say, is uh, we identify the wildlife corridors. We move out people from the wildlife corridors. We also uh, do some kind of uh, inventory of how much of elephants we have here. How many do we have? Are they sustainable? Are they able to feed within what we have? If they are not, then we can move some of them away, uh, relocate them to maybe Mount Kenya or Abadea forests. And uh, also talk to people to start some kind of uh, uh, income generating activities based on conservation issues so that we can also try to do conservation as we benefit along the way.
One thing that is clear to me is that unless we can get our people to work and live with wildlife, wildlife has no future. We need conservation as much as we need development because uh, a healthy environment is a healthy nation. If we don't balance, nature is going obviously, as Wangari mother used to say, to take charge. Nature is going to revenge. Nature is going to, you know, come after us one way or another. That is definite. My aspiration for, for the future is that uh, we are able to make wildlife conservation as beneficial as any other enterprise, such that the community can be more uh, positive and more responsive to uh, the calls for conservation. We have only 12% of our land area that has been put aside as conservation land, okay? 8% as national parks. The other 4% or maybe slightly more as community conservation areas, game reserves, multi-use areas that have basically been designated as wildlife areas. Now that means out of 100% of Kenya, <laughs> only 12% is demarcated as wildlife areas. A large percentage of our wildlife lives outside this 12%, is roaming outside the national parks and reserves in community areas. Can you see a Kenya with 70 million people and then elephants walking around? You see, we have a real challenge. So as a nation, we need to ask ourselves whether we want to have wildlife.